Should Woolworth lunch counter should have been allowed to stay segregated? Sir, just yes or no? What I think would happen, what, what I'm saying is, is that I don't to repeal the Civil Rights Act. Joining me now to talk about it, John Stossel, anchor of Stossel over on the Fox Business Network. Rand Paul is a libertarian. You are a libertarian. He is getting excoriated for suggesting let businesses decide for themselves, you know, whether they're going to be racist or not racist, because once the government gets involved, it's a slippery slope. Do you agree with that? Totally. I'm in total agreement with Rand Paul. <laughs> You can call it public accommodation, and it is, but it's a private business. And if a private business wants to say, we don't want any blonde anchor women or mustached guys, it ought to be their right. Huh? What the hell's wrong with you? That's open hand slap, huh? You think it's fake? You come to the Black Students Association, they have to take white people, or the, the Gay Softball Association, they have to take straight people. We should have r freedom of association in America. Okay, well, It sounds fine, right? So who cares if the blonde anchor woman and the mustached anchor man can't go into the lunch uh, room? But as you know, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 came, came around because it was needed. Blacks weren't allowed to sit at the lunch counter with whites. They, they, they couldn't, as they traveled from state to state in this country, they couldn't go in and use a restroom. They couldn't get served meals and so on. And therefore, unfortunately, in this country, a law was necessary to get them equal rights. But those, Jim Crow, those were government rules. Government was saying, we have white and black drinking fountains. That's very different from saying private people can't discriminate. How do you know, how do you know that these private business owners who own restaurants and so on would have said, you know what, yes, we we will take blacks, we'll take Some gays, wouldn't. we'll take lesbians, if they hadn't been forced to do it. Because eventually they would have lost business. The free market competition would have cleaned. The reason we talk about this chapter in our country's history as the fight for civil rights is because it was a fight. There were two sides to it. There was the civil rights movement, activists pushing for equal access to the rights and privileges of citizenship for black Americans. And there was another side that was pushing back. Pro-segregation forces weren't just violent hoods, thugs in the streets, riotous forces, rogue policemen, individual bigots. The violence is what we all remember about that era, but there was also a very fervent intellectual and political side to the pro-segregation forces as well. Title II of the 1964 Civil Rights Act states, quote, all persons shall be entitled to the full and equal enjoyment of the goods, services, facilities, privileges, advantages, and accommodations of any place of public accommodation as defined in this section without discrimination on the ground of race, color, religion, or national origin. That is, that is some of the more eloquent legalese of the whole of American statutory law, Title II of the Civil Rights Act. In, in practical terms, what it means is that any private business, a hotel, a motel, a restaurant, a lunch counter, a theater, a concert hall, a stadium, any private business that offers services to the general public cannot discriminate. It ended, for example, Woolworth's lunch counter's practice of only serving white people. It made, illegal, made it illegal for a private business owner in Georgia, like, say, Lester Maddox, to ban black patrons from his restaurant. Mr. Maddox is seen here in this picture running an African-American man out of his restaurant at gunpoint. In Mr. Maddox's right hand, you can see a short-nosed revolver. Mr. Maddox's son is holding a pickaxe handle. When Lester Maddox later made his successful run for governor of Georgia, the pickaxe was adopted as the symbol of his campaign. The pickaxe, symbolizing the purported heroism of his efforts to keep his business white only against the law.